Alright guys, I am back with a new episode and as the title says, I'm going to go over six things, there's a million more, but six main things that I wish I knew or at least practiced or let sink in a little bit more when I first started my fitness journey. So I don't even know when the start of my fitness journey would be. Sometimes I say it's like my first prep because that's when I got real serious and real regimented. But prior to that, I had always been into fitness. I had always been experimenting with different things. And so I'm taking a lot of these learning experiences from my prep start of my fitness journey and then even before then. The number one biggest thing for me that I wish and I knew this to some extent, but I wish that I had actually practiced it, it would have saved me years of struggle, was food is fuel. And in order to build the lean muscle mass that I wanted, I needed to eat. For me, my biggest struggle was eating enough. I came from a background of anorexia. I was terrified of foods. I would restrict all the time. A thousand calories was a lot for me. But what I didn't understand was that I wasn't eating enough to one, build that lean mass that I thought that I was building. So it was under there, I just, you know, I, I just couldn't see it. That's what I had rationalized in my head. And two, I wasn't eating enough so my BMR and my metabolism were not moving. I wasn't eating enough to fuel so I couldn't create a deficit. I couldn't, I didn't really understand any of that then, but I just was kind of stuck. So I almost felt like I was just spinning my wheels. I wasn't eating enough to build lean muscle and I wasn't eating enough to burn fat. It goes both ways. So if you're somebody who is overweight and struggles to create that caloric deficit to lose fat, the same rule applies. Food is fuel. If you're going to eat that, are you going to use it? And you know, for people like me at the time when I was struggling to get enough food in, I needed to eat. So number one, food is fuel and it goes honestly all different directions. I really feel like let that sink in for a second and it, pff, my, amazing things happen. So that's number one. Two kind of falls into this category. You cannot out train a bad diet. Oh my gosh, but I tried. Oh man, did I try. I figured I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna bust my ass. I got time today. I'm gonna be there for four hours. I wasn't fueling myself for those types of workouts, first of all. And second, I was probably on the verge of even overtraining, meaning I wasn't fueling myself properly. I wasn't allowing myself to recover. I was creating all of this stress, physical stress, that my body was kind of like, uh, what are you doing? So as hard as I tried to out train and what I thought I was doing was I was going out, you know, and I'd go out on the weekends and I'd have drinks and I'd have whatever other food was open at three o'clock in the morning, which was definitely not salad places, you know, and I figured I'll just go into the, go to the gym the next day and I'll just burn it all off. Well, it doesn't work out that way because now my body's completely freaked out because I've restricted all, all week long, not eating enough. Then I go and binge on some shit. My body's kind of like, what do you want me to do with this? Hoard it. I don't know when she's going to feed me again. So I think I'm just going to hold on to all this food that she just gave me in a surplus last night. We're not even going to use it. And then I go in and try to kill myself through a workout. So Again, I was just kind of grinding my gears thinking I'll make up for it in the gym, which goes into number three of the things that I wish I had sunk in. You cannot make up for a bad day. Don't even try because that's what goes into this restricting and binging mentality. Don't try to make up for a bad day. So I'd go out on the weekends and I would binge drink because there is no other way in my book. You're either sober or you're piss ass drunk. That's pretty much how it went for me. So I would drink a whole bunch of calories and then I would probably eat. No, not probably, I did. I ate like shit. So then the next day I would think I'm just not gonna eat today because I'm gonna make up for what I did yesterday. I'm also gonna go into the gym now for four hours and try to sweat it all out and no. No, it basically is causing my body to completely freak out, shut down, I don't know what's going on, you're overtraining, you're not feeding me, you're feeding me too much, I digress. So number three, you cannot out-train a bad diet. And for those of you watching this, wondering what to do after you have a bad day, the best thing to do is get right back on track with consistency. It's gone, it happened, acknowledge it, it's in the past, move on. Number four. Everything in moderation. 
I wish that I understood that there are no bad foods. There are no fear foods. I was creating this mentality of these things are bad. And I think it did stem for me back to my eating disorder days. These things that were high in calories, these things that were high in carbs, whatever they were, they were bad. I would completely stay away from them, cut them out completely out of my diet, only to binge on them probably on a weekly basis. And so it, again, it was this horrible cycle of really tight regimen all week long to binge on all these foods on the weekends. And so what I've learned and what I still do now is through flexible dieting, you can literally have your cake and eat it too. And that really goes along with exercising the 80-20 rule. So 80% of the foods should be clean and should be whole food sources. 20%, you can live, you can have some wiggle room in there. Personally, I have a piece of chocolate every single day. But because I allow myself a small piece here and there, I don't feel the need when there's a crap ton of sweets that I've just completely restricted myself against and created a barrier for the last how many months of dieting. If there are things that you enjoy, that you absolutely love, you're gonna wanna try to fit them into your diet. The best diet for you is one that you can stick to. So if you find that you're so good during the week, like I was, and then you just wanna go and have cheat meals on the weekends, probably not following a very realistic and sustainable diet for you. That goes into number five, and I wish, and I wish, I wish I understood this concept, but I've, you guys have heard me say it before, this is not a diet, it is a lifestyle change. I mean, really, really good, really good, what, till when? Till when? Till you magically achieve your results, you're gonna be really, really good, and then what? You're just gonna go back to whatever you wanted that wasn't working in the first place? No, it doesn't work like that. You've seen it before, all of these fad diets out there. You lose 10 pounds, you lose 15 pounds. I lost 20 pounds on the South Beach diet, on the Atkins, whatever the hell it was. But then I lost it at one point and then I gained it all back. Yeah, why? Because it wasn't sustainable, because you didn't change your lifestyle to reflect the changes that you're making physically and hopefully mentally. Actually, I know mentally if you're doing this right. If you can get it into your head right now, if you're just starting out or if you've been at this for a while and you still have not made as much headway as you want, try changing your mentality. This is a lifestyle change. These are habits and routines and regimens that you are now going to instill in your daily life for the rest of ever. If you want to feel good from the inside out and look good, you have to make a lifestyle change. There is no diet on this earth that is going to give you those results and then just allow you to do whatever you want and maintain. And so then that goes into my sixth one. And this is a, and this is a big one, but I saved it for last because I know it's a really hard struggle for a lot of people and it was for me. I kind of went from, I would say one extreme um, to the other because I went straight from working in a bar industry where I was up at odd hours of the night, drank a lot, ate like crap, restricted, and I went straight into competing. So I kind of went two sides of the extreme spec spectrum. And number six of the things that I wish that I knew before I started all this is people are going to talk regardless. And when I say people, I mean your friends and family members, people around you. Basically, they're gonna talk about you if you do, they're gonna talk about you if you don't. One thing I wish that I had grasped was I can't live my life for other people. I have to make me happy first. I have to make Kristen happy first. And I think I yo-yoed with this for a long time. Um, a lot of my friends didn't follow the lifestyle that I knew that I needed or the diet that I knew that I needed because I don't know if I knew it was a lifestyle back then in order to get my results. So even if I did make headway during the work week, on the weekends all my friends wanted to go out and they wanted to drink and they wanted to binge eat. A lot of this was my choice obviously and I know that but I was like okay yeah that's fine. Nobody wanted to be like okay you know like let's go out and you know not drink or let's go out and and so I would go along with them. But in hindsight, I realized that it probably wouldn't have mattered if I said I wanted to go out and I didn't drink or I didn't eat or I didn't, you know, or eat the crap or whatever. It probably wouldn't have mattered. And I don't wanna say that I lost friends in a malicious way because I didn't. We just kinda of grew apart and it's so bittersweet to think about, but it is. And I, I said this in a episode, um, episode three, but I did, I talked about that it's not their journey to understand. And I wish that I had grasped that concept because in order to make real headway in my life, in my health, and my happiness, I had to stop 
thinking about what other people were going to say. I had to stop being worried about being judged because they're gonna judge you regardless. And now, three years into it on the other side, I still have a lot of my same friends that have seen what I'm doing in my life and want the same things. And so I've actually coached some of them. And I've had some friends that we just kind of grew apart and we'll see each other. It's not awkward, it's just we grew apart in different lives. And all I can say is that if, if you're able to stand firm in what you know is, is going to make you happy, I promise you that that happiness that you will feel from the inside out will attract either your current friends or brand new friends. But that's all part of life and it's a, it's, it's a hard learning experience no matter how old you are because I'm sure I'm not done with life experiences by any means. I'm sure it's gonna keep happening. But I knew in my heart at some point, the more I kind of got the momentum and kept going, that this is what I had to do to make me honestly the best version of me. I was dating my husband at the time to be the best girlfriend for him and now the best wife, to be the best friend to my friends, to be the best sister to my siblings, to be the best daughter. I had to find what was gonna make me happy. That's not selfish. But if you wanna be the very best version of you, you have to carve out that time for yourself regardless of what anybody says. There you have it. That is six things that I wish that I knew. And like I said, I didn't necessarily not know them. I just didn't put them I didn't commit them to action, I didn't put them to use, I didn't actually feel the effects of those. And you guys watching this might not even feel those effects, but I hope that this video at least sticks in your brain a little bit. Know that all of these six things are scary in themselves because what they're doing is they get you out of your comfort zone. Because there was a little voice in the back of my head that wanted to keep me in this comfort zone. And if you have to change, if you're like me and you have to change any one of these six, it's gonna require a step forward out of that comfort zone. And that's why it's scary. And that's why so many people have such a hard time moving forward and making progress. Because something back here is keeping them in that comfort zone. But just know, if you can take those first steps of jumping out of that comfort zone, that's when the magic happens. If you like these types of videos, please give this video a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe so you don't miss another video. I'm doing well on the two videos a week upload schedule so far. And let me know what other types of things that you guys wanna see. Thank you as always for watching and the continued support. I really can't thank you guys enough as I continue to grow this channel, continue to grow my, grow my platform and share my journey with all of you guys. So. I will see you in the next one. Bye.